pretty soon. Just wait, waiting for Facebook to do its thing here. Yeah. So we're recording and uh, people are on. Just wait for Facebook here, right? Boy, it's slow this morning. I don't know if that's my internet or, or what, know. but it is slow. Holy cow. All these technical problems this morning, right? Yeah, I got a new, I have a new computer coming, so this one's trashed. Christmas, Christmas is coming. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Uh, well, hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Saturday Morning Multifamily Unplugged. Hey, never mind the technical issues, right? The number one Saturday morning radio show for real estate investors, brokers, property management, and other industry professionals. Hey, where we dive into raw, unscripted conversation about multifamily, real estate, property management, and current events. Boy, we got a handful for you this morning, too. Listen, I'm joined by my co-host this morning, C. Gordon Moose, who we probably call Moose. Morning, Moose. What's up? Hey, how are you, Mike? I'm great. Good to see you, man. A little uh, technical issues, but we got it worked out, right? Yep. So listen, uh, we're going to talk about unscripted, no fluff, no you know factual data here this morning. Kind of how real estate goes on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, uh, we want to stay in tune with everything that's going on in the marketplace. We got some crazy headlines this morning, and you know, I just kind of came to the table this morning with some some ideas of some things to talk about. So we'll kind of talk uh, talk through some of that stuff. You know, end of the year kind of deal here as we go along. What's What's the upcoming year going to look like for people and uh, with the pandemic and all that? Hey, this show is brought to you by this morning by My Core Intentions and Your Focus Guy, two great companies that uh, coaching and training and possibilities for you. That's for sure. Here, let me ask you this. Are you living a ridiculous life? Moose, you live in a ridiculous life? You know, sometimes it sure feels that way, Mike. <laughs> Hey, you know what? Listen, I'll tell you what. A guy told me a long time ago, or Zig Ziglar used to say this. He said, when somebody asks you how you're doing, if you just say to them, unbelievable, what uh, that kind of covers both sides, right? <laughs> covers good, covers bad. So I, it's it, you just did that when I said, hey, are you living a ridiculous life? Yeah, you covered both sides. That's for it's, sure. It's unbelievable. You just wouldn't believe it if I told you. You know what? Sometimes this is all unpredictable unbelievable yeah. ridiculous whatever yeah. right yeah exactly so, hey listen while i'm thinking about it right now make sure that you like us on social media subscribe to us on youtube my core intentions uh posts these saturday morning radio shows for us and make sure that you're a subscriber and you're following us on social media on all the platforms like us love us do all that crazy stuff would you please so that uh, you help us keep our ratings up and uh, keep you abreast of what's going on. So, hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Uh, put some comments in the chat box. Let's light up the chat box this morning. If you have questions or anything that uh, you want us to talk about or try and answer for you. Hey, one thing that Carl and I know is that we don't have all the answers, but we have 50 years of experience in the industry. And along with that 50 years of experience, we've got a few answers, maybe not all of them. Carl, what's going on today? Nothing. It's been a little bit of a crazy day. I've got, um, you know, you know, part of what I do, as you know, Mike, is the fire business. And that's uh, we had a couple of fires out there, so you know, always dealing with that. Which, you know, the one thing about being in the in the real estate business is there's some unpredictability to it. So you just don't know what's going to happen with the weather, or with the fire, with tenants. So, you know, I've just been dealing with a little bit of that. But other than that, you know, I'm looking forward. It's going to be a great day today, and uh, you know, uh, all's good. Hey, talk about that fire business thing a little bit, would you? Yeah. Well, so, um, you know, I owned property for a long, long time. I had about 13 buildings at one point. Never had a fire, never had a major disaster. And actually, Dave Rasmussen, who was, a, he was one of the uh, sponsors of our Multifamily Global Summit. He was my uh, real, uh, real estate insurance guy. And he had all our properties. And one day... I'll never forget, it was in February, early February, I forget the year, but we were sitting in my house, everything was calm, it was a Sunday morning, all of a sudden, all the phones started blowing up, our office phone, my cell phone, my wife's cell phone at the time, um, and our 28 unit building, or 27 unit building, uh, had a major fire, and it was like, 
it totally took me by surprise. I had no, you know, I, I couldn't believe it. And so I rushed down there. I'm going down the highway and I could see the big black plume of smoke. And I'm like, holy mackerel, that's my building, you know. And so I got on site and sure enough, a third of the building had gone up in flames. It was it was a nightmare. Isn't it funny? You kind of instinctually know when when something like that's going on. Right. So you see that building in the distance and you go, oh, my God. You know, I had that happen to to me uh, a number of years ago. I had a good friend who who passed away in a fire. Oh, wow. And was coming down the expressway. And I, I saw this these flames and this smoke like a couple of miles off the expressway. And I said, oh, my God, that looks like, uh, you know, Kurt's place. And um, sure enough, man, I got home and, and that night found out what had happened. And, you know, it, it's instinctual when you see when you get when that stuff kind of happens and you know what's going on. It's kind of yeah. kind of goofy, isn't it? So, yeah, it is. It is a little weird. And you know what? I, I got on site and the, the firemen were coming out of the building. And those guys are un- unbelievable. You know what I mean? What they do, they, they the, all they care about is is saving lives. It's all they care about. They don't care about the property, and rightfully so. I mean, they got in there and they just got everybody out. Nobody got hurt. Um, you know, it was it was in the winter. Some one woman moved her couch and she put her couch leg on the cord of her space heater, and it sparked and it caught the caught everything on fire. So it was an, you know totally an accident. Um, and at the end of the day, my friend Sam Fields, who I played hockey with, uh, they're public adjusters. And for anybody that doesn't know what that is, a public adjuster is the person that works for the property owner to, to negotiate against the insurance company. So, um, you know, luckily I had a friend in the business and now I'm working with them. I actually work with them, um, you know, to, to spread the word to other property owners. If you ever have a fire or a flood or something major like that, um, definitely get an adjuster because they ended up really saving my rear end on that one. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, I've always uh, I've always found that public adjusters have been very helpful. You know, uh, I, I, I chased uh, storm damage for a long time. And, you know, when a hailstorm would come through, you uh, you know, my construction company did a lot of that storm damage stuff. We'd go out and we'd do roofs and siding and um, help the homeowners mitigate with insurance companies. And it's always different when somebody from a third party is doing it versus the homeowner themselves or the building owner, right? Yeah. So that's why public adjusters like, you know, the guys you work for, uh, what's that, Fields Loss Consulting? Field, yeah, Fields Loss Consulting. They were also a, they were also a sponsor for the summit. Yeah, let's give them a shame, shameful plug this morning, right? Because yeah. that's a smelly, yeah. smelly job, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, it is. And, you know, Sam and Steve Fields have been doing it since 1974. It's a father-son team, and uh, they're really great. I mean, the, the insurance company wanted to settle with me for about 180000 and these guys got me another $90,000. So the $180,000 claim became a $270,000 claim. And the reason being, just like you said, Mike, I had no idea what I was doing. And the insurance company, they know what they're doing because they do it all day long. I've been in the business 20 years and never had a fire, right? So they were going to take advantage of me. And, um, you know, I always tell people, you know, your insurance agent, like Dave Rasmussen, is your friend. He's the one that's going to, you know, make sure you're covered. But when you have a claim, you know, your roof blows off or a tree goes through your building or fire or whatever, water damage, the people that they send out from the insurance company, their job is to minimize the claim. So their job is to protect the insurance company, not to protect you. So working with a public adjuster, and if you're in Chicago, in the Chicago area, you know, absolutely call us. Because we can help you. I would never settle a claim on my own. It'd be like going to court without an attorney. You just wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? You just right. it's just not wise. Hey, press F five on your computer. That's try and refresh that uh speaker of yours. You're kind of oh. lagging a little bit. Oh, I might what I do, control five? No, just F five, yeah. Should uh refresh like a little bit and um Okay. Does it sound better? Huh? Does that sound better? Yeah. No, it does. I was kind of going to be a smart aleck, but hey, listen, I got a couple headlines. Yeah, let's do it. So uh, a couple things I want to talk about. So a couple headlines, and then uh, uh, I want to talk about our coaching program. You know, you and I, what's kind of interesting is we did the summit, right? At the end of the summit, we went ahead and you started off on your, your side of the coaching program. I started off on mine. You and I haven't even talked about it. So this morning, maybe we'll take a little time and, and chat about that. But hey, uh, so I pulled this off of um, 
the internet this morning off of uh, there's a there's a magazine out there. It's called Multifamily Executive. It's a it's a online deal, and they had some articles in there this morning that that just kind of looked really uh, interesting. And and I don't even know if any more, you know, as interesting as they are, just things that we should always be thinking about. But the first idea is that you should always behave as a beginner, you should always act as a beginner. And when I saw that, I thought, man, that's just interesting. I, I believe that because I think the more that we come at some of this stuff as a beginner that we don't know, the more we can learn. You know, this week I was listening to uh, a Jim Rowan uh, thing on, on YouTube. And Jim said, one of, one of the comments that he made was learn, execute and teach. And I thought, man, that's kind of what we do, right? We've learned all this stuff. We've executed over the years. Now we teach it to other people. And, and I still sometimes feel like a beginner. You know, I mean, I said at the beginning of the show, hey, you know, we might not have all the answers, but we sure the heck are going to try and see what we can find out or what kind of answers we're going to get for you. So, um, but this woman says, uh, you know, continue to scrape your knees, act like a beginner, always uh, striving for bigger goals, trying to find something different. Uh, another guy uh, chimes in on that and he says that uh, be a servant leader a platform thinker, think uh, business to business or business to consumer. And how are you, uh, how are you embracing that? What are you doing for others around you? Servant leadership. And I always love this, you know, servant leadership, I think is just, uh, this kind of comes out of the John Maxwell company, but, um, or he's talking about it in this article. Anyhow, um, the quote here is in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert mind, there are few, <laughs> but you know, Hey, listen, how can I serve you? You know, listen, one of the things that I teach about in my coaching is networking and team building. And I think it's really critical. So I met a woman this past week and I actually did a podcast recording with her. Her name's Megan Hill. So, uh, in a couple of weeks, we'll air that and it'll be out on Spotify and Apple. But she had a post on LinkedIn that said, um, hey, I'm looking to meet two new people today. Who wants to, uh, who, who wants to connect? And I jumped on it right away, right? Because I'm, I'm all about meeting people and talking to people and building my network and my team. Um, and, and we connected and just really hit it off. I mean, sometimes you meet people and you go, holy cow. You know, kind of like you and I did when we met, right? You know, it's like, man, there's some some connection there. And and sometimes you don't, but it's good to have people in your court, people in your in your arena, right? The more you build your circle of influence, the more you have to offer other people. So because we learn, because we execute, because we teach and we give it away, right? You know, I learned a long time ago that if you don't give it away, you can't get any more. Yeah. You just can't make room. It's like in your closet, right? If you haven't worn something for six months, go throw it out, make room in your closet because you'll be able to go put something new in there then. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really love that because it's, it really is all about service. You know, when you get to a certain point, you know, it's like, I, I forget, I think it was uh, Deepak Chopra talks about this, you know, your vessel, right? It's if the first half of your life, if you work on filling it up, the second half of your life, you, you, you work on emptying it and giving it away, you know? And I think that's, you know, the law of reciprocity, the law of giving, you know, you know, all those things, you know, Zig Ziglar, what does he say, right? He used to say, you know, the more people you help get what they want, the more you're going to, you know, get what you want. So I really think you get to a certain point in your life, Mike, and your career, where there isn't really much else to do, except start to give it away and start to take on, you know, other, you know, younger people, the next generation, or maybe two generations behind you, you know what I mean? And, and, and that's really fulfilling. And I know you really get a lot out of that. Um, I know you're all about service and you're all about helping people, which is one of the reasons why you are, you have a magnetic personality because people like, you know, they like being around you. I mean, all kidding aside, I mean, you and I joke with each other, but in reality, you know, you really, you really are a person that that's about, you know, service and helping other people. And I believe I am too. And that's, you know, that that's very fulfilling. I mean, you know, that's, and that, that's a little ridiculous, you know, because not everybody, I think everybody has that down deep as a human being, 
However, not everybody's ridiculously, you know, bringing it to the surface and doing it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it takes people back like, wow, why are you, you know, why are you doing this? You know, why are you giving this away or why are you helping me? And it's just, just for the, just for the, just to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I was looking for my live feed on Facebook. I see that I see over here that we're live, but I couldn't find the feed and I, I just found it. So it's that's good. And then you know, the other thing, the other thing you talked about was, you know, you know, that's really great what you said, you know, when you're beginning, when you're just starting out, it's like a little kid, you know, their, you know, their potential, their possibilities are endless, right? Well, I, I believe that, that, you know, if you think about that, if, if potential is infinite, right, and possibilities are infinite, right, and it doesn't matter how old you are, right? It's, you know, you have as much potential today as you did when you were, you know, a little kid or whatever. So I, when you look at it from that perspective, you can always have that beginner's mind, right? And not be the know-it-all because if, if, the, if the storehouse of the universe is infinite, then you know, you're never gonna take more than your share. You're never, you're, you're never gonna reach the end, right? So just keep, like you said, you know, like a conduit, right? If you, if you fill up your closet, there's no room for you know, this year's fashion. Or if you, you, know, if you look at a pipe, you know, I like to use the pipe analogy. You know, if you if you clog up one end of the pipe, nothing else is going to pass through it. So that's that's really great advice. Yeah. Hey, Roto Rooter. Hey, listen, let's do this. Let's say hi to a few people because there's a bunch of people online, right? So, uh, hey, good morning, Steve. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Carol. Michael. David. Good to see you guys this morning. Lisa. How you guys doing? Glad you're here. So, uh, hey, if there's anything you want to hear or you want us to talk about. Uh, send us a text, send, you know, put something in the chat. You know what, Carl, leadership, you know, uh, we talked about servant leadership, but leadership, you know, um, one of the things that kind of occurred to me this week is that um, this was kind of a personal realization, right? Is, and, and I was talking to my marketing team about this, but I'll say something and I'll put something out there. Like, uh, for instance, um, here was the comment that I made was I want the name, my core intentions to be synonymous with multifamily investing. So over the next uh, period of time, the next few years, as, as we continue to build this out, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my core intentions when, you know, like, hey, the big thing these days is uh, you can go to Alexa and say, Alexa, where's a dry cleaner? What's playing at the movie theater? When somebody says, hey, Alexa, I need a multifamily uh, investment opportunity. Oh, call my core intentions, right? So I want to be that synonymous in the marketplace. So I have this tendency to, to say things, but not follow through on them myself. So here's what I, here's what I don't get to do, right? Is I don't get to figure out, Hey, how do we, uh, how do we put that into action? So how do I now from a leadership standpoint, go to my team and say, Hey, look guys, this is what we want to do but here's what needs to happen now in order to make it happen and put a plan together. So we're rolling out a whole new branding uh, system the first of the year, right? So we're rebranding my core intentions and my platform, insider secrets, all of that. And there, so watch for a new look because we're gonna have a new look come out uh, in the next couple of weeks. And I think that we've spent a lot of time on it the last few weeks and put a nice uh, format together so, so the look is going to be a little bit different, but here's what I said last night, we were on a meeting last night and I said, look, I said, so we've got these great ideas, these great concepts, and we put this beautiful brand program together. What's the action plan now? Yeah. Okay. What's the timelines look like? And I think so much in life we do that in the things that we do is we don't lay out what that timeline is going to be, what the execution is going to be. You know what, we can have the greatest plan, the greatest exit plan in the world, but if we don't execute properly, we're dead in the water. And execution is so critical in everything that we do. Hey, listen, we got a friend, you and I have a friend in New York, Danny Barrero, right? And Danny is a great executor at uh, his rehabs, at his work, when something needs to be done. Boy, you know, watch him on social media because what he does is he just, talks about it all the time and he's actually out there executing and getting things done. 
So he's a great example of, of good execution, you know? Yeah, yeah. And Danny, Danny and I have known each other. We were actually college roommates for years. His his uh, YouTube is Golden Nuggets, I believe. It's uh, U.S. land investment is, is one of them. The other one is Golden Nuggets. But, you know, you're right, Mike. Execu we talk about all the time execution. And, you know, you know, me being a big Think and Grow Rich fan, you know, person, for those of you that don't know me, my whole, my whole training program is around Think and Grow Rich. And the fourth chapter of that book is organized planning. And it's a great chapter. If you've never read that book or just go to YouTube and, and put my name in Seagorn Moose and organized planning. I did some videos on that, uh, but it's a great, it talks exactly about that, about getting a plan and executing. And the other thing I want to mention is something you mentioned, leadership. In that chapter, it talks about the 11 tenets of leadership, right? The 11 things that all leaders have. And I, I'll be more than happy to show you with them because I've I've uh, memorized them, right? They have to have the cooperation of others, right? They have to have um, uh, high self-confidence, right? They have to uh, execute on their plan, right? They have to, they have to be a good communicator. They have to, uh, or what's required is, um, uh, they have to be empathetic to other people. They have, you know, they're, they're required to take 100% responsibility for whatever, right? They have to be, um, um, a, a key, they have to have a keen sense of justice. Right in fairness, right. So you know they have to have a organized plan and a and a definite purpose and desire. So those eleven things that all leaders do, whether you're you're looking, you're, whether you're a single mom that's leading your family, or you're running a, a multinational corporation, or you're running your multifamily rehab business like Danny Barrero, these are the things that make a great leader. And Napoleon Hill laid them right out there for us. Yeah. Hey, uh, and David, listen, if Danny's around, you might want to have him tune in and listen that we're talking about him, right? So. Oh, is that his brother David on there? Brother, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, so listen, I, I, wanna, I want you to talk about that a little bit more, but, but there's one thing here. There's one uh, article that came up uh, this morning when I was looking at headlines that, that kind of caught my eye. And I want to know what you think, and I want to really know what our listeners think. There's people on that are in the property management space this morning. I'm seeing the names. There's people that are um, in the investment space. And here's what I want to know. Avalon Bay, and if anybody knows who Avalon Bay is, they are one of the largest operator, owner operators in the country, right? They, you know, hey, like, like so many syndicators, they started out buying one small multifamily deal and now they own, you know, 50 or 60,000 and manage another 100,000 units in the country, right? So, um, but here's what they say. The Avalon Bay just rolled out a 238 unit luxury community that's designed to operate with any physical amenities. So I've always been an advocate that you attract tenants by amenities, amenities like business centers, dog parks, fitness centers. These guys are saying they're taking all that away. Wow. That all you're going to have is 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 the is living there and uh, virtual office. So I find it I find it interesting that you know is is the world going to start to go this direction? I mean, are we really going to give up uh, what we've known for all these years? Right. You know, that that's an interesting question, Mike. And you know, listen. I'm sure you can relate to this. You know, it's not the first time that one of the big boys or, or somebody, you know, tried to do something or attempted to do something different and wasn't right. I mean, you know, I'm sure that company, you know, they're a billion dollar outfit, you know, multi-billion dollar outfit. So, that, you know, they've done their research and everything else. Um, and it is interesting. And, you know, listen, you and I both know, you know, real estate is a local thing, right? You know, what's, what's true in Lincoln Park on the north side of Chicago is not true in Washington Park on the south side of Chicago. So, um, you know, who knows, maybe that factors into it. Maybe, you know, the location of where they're, you know, where they're at, um, you know, that's what the demand is down there and that's what the research has found out. But, you know, I, I'm more, I'm more like you, you know, um, and I think as people, this is just my opinion. I think as people do get used to this, this, um, how we've, you know, the new normal, which is a lot of people are, you know, moving out of urban areas and into suburban areas because they can work, in their basement or their spare bedroom or whatever. And I think that's going to continue around you. I mean, all kidding aside, I mean, you and I joke with each other, but in reality, you know, you really, you, you, 
like you know the new normal, which is a lot of people are you know, moving out of urban. Is that Facebook playing, Mike, or what? In their basement or their spare bedroom or whatever. And I right. think that's going to continue around you. I mean, all kidding aside, I mean, you and I joke with each other, but wow. in reality, you know, you really. That's crazy, you, isn't it? You, you know, yeah, the there's a, is that Facebook? Yeah, I'm just punching buttons here like crazy. Uh-oh. Is it? Okay. But anyway, you got what I was saying. You know, I heard that on the background. But, you know, I think, you know, I think people are just the opposite. I think people are going to want, you know, they're going to want that dog park close to their their house but who knows i mean you know I, you know i mean that's where that's how innovation happens right trial and error you know they try something and either it catches on or it doesn't yeah. but i i think you know i mean one of the reasons i live in a high-rise building downtown chicago is i like the amenities right i i mean i like the amenities in this building so but that's me you know some people may not hey listen i just want to let you know that uh we got a, co- a couple comments out here um uh, cam morning cam cam says great show uh, Larry says good morning, uh, and he's grateful that we're here. Nice. So, um, hey, listen. Uh, so, you know what? I can't believe that we're going to continue to wear masks the rest of our life. I believe that uh, there's going to be a vaccine and that things are going to change. Sometime this year, we'll be able to walk around freely. You know, hey, I'm of the opinion, man, we got to build an immune system. You know, yeah. go, go out there and, and walk around and rub shoulders with people. I mean, it's, you know, it's, a, it's interesting you say that, Mike, because, you know, I used the analogy the other day and you wanted to talk about our coaching program. I think it's a good idea to do that. Um, but it also, you know, it also, you said you build immunity, but also our mental immunity, right? I mean, I, I you know, I, I brought, I, I said that to a friend of mine two days ago, we were having a cup of coffee. And I said, you know, what about your mental immunity, right? Like, how do you guard yourself against the negative thinking, right? And all the, all the, the, uh, the noise that's out there. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're talking about building a business or you're talking about building a portfolio of multifamily properties, you know, you've got, you want to, you want to have that mental strength too, right? And you want to, you want to be able to safeguard yourself against the naysayers, against the time when people say no to you, because, you know, you're going to get those no's, you're going to get, you know, the bank's going to say no to you, or you're not going to get a deal that you wanted, right? And so how do you, how do you safeguard and and build immunity around your, your mental attitude, right? And your, and your, uh, your mental wellness uh, to keep you moving forward, because I think that's really important, especially when you get started, you know, you're going to make mistakes, right? And you're going to, you know, you're going to have that self-doubt and you're going to, there's going to be some confusion about some things until you get comfortable with them. And, you know, one of the ways to get comfortable with them is align yourself with, with, with someone that can give you some guidance, right. That's been down that road. Um, you know, you and I've talked about this, you know, what if you and I had met you and I, you know, 30 years ago, you know, how many mistakes would I have avoided if I had someone like you in my camp uh, 30 years ago when I started investing? I mean, it, it probably would have, you know, a thousand dollar a month investment, you know, in coaching with you probably would have paid me millions of dollars in dividends. I'm, I'm sure of it, you know, over the course of those, that time, because of all the deals I've done and all the mistakes I made, you know, and I don't even want to think about putting that on a spreadsheet, you know, how much money I lost just from making mistakes. And so, you know, how do you safeguard and how do you build mental immunity, um, you know, so that when, the, when those things happen, because they will happen, that they don't throw you off guard. You know, I mean, yeah. so what's interesting is what you're talking about. And listen, I, I came from the other side. I've had a coach for 25 years, right? I've been personally coached and I still made mistakes Yeah. and I still lost money and I still made a million and lost it. Right. It happens. But but here's what happens is what you learn from it. Listen, one of the things I put in that's in my bio bio is I, I have a resilient attitude. So, Carl, I have to ask you, you know, when you fall down, it's like this woman who in the headline that said, you know, always treat it like you're a beginner, right? When you fall down and you stub your toe, what do you do? Do you fall yeah. down and hold your toe or do you get up and, and walk it out? Yeah. Right? Well, you know, it's it's interesting because Napoleon Hill talks about that. There's a difference between temporary uh, failure, right, and defeat, right? Failure is the first step of success. If you're afraid to fail, if you're not willing to fail, 
you'll never succeed, right? So failure is the first step of success. I mean, he uses Thomas Edison because Napoleon Hill actually interviewed Thomas Edison. He was one of Thomas Edison's contemporary. And in the book, he talks about the story of the newspaper man that asked Edison why it took him 10,000 uh, mistakes to figure out how to keep a light bulb, the filament of a light bulb for you know more than several minutes because they tried over nearly 10,000 items, right? And Edison's response was, I, he said, because it showed me what not to use, right? And so he looked at it from the perspective of, he didn't, he didn't quit, he didn't decide to quit. He just kept trying new things until he finally got the filament that we still use today in, in, in uh, incandescent light bulbs. But the point is, if you're, if you're not willing to fail, you'll ne you're never going to succeed. Defeat is different. Defeat is when you mentally decide to quit, right? Defeat is when you decide to quit. And that is, um, th that's completely, totally in your control. Because as you said, Mike, even when you have guidance and when you, even when you have experience, you're going to have temporary setbacks. And if you, if you approach it from that perspective, right, that you are going to fall down, fall down forward, right? Keep moving forward, get up, keep your desire, um, you know, very crystal clear in your mind and, and understand that tripping and falling and scraping your knee is part of your growth. It's part of success because that, that's just what you and I both know. Yeah. Hey, listen, I got a crazy idea, and, and I, I have a question for you, though, uh, but all of a sudden, I kind of like had this crazy idea, right? There's a few people that are on listening. A um, couple people you might know, Eddie Gamboa says, hello, great information. He really likes what you have to say this morning. Yeah. Uh, Larry Jones, the same deal. Um, but listen, here's a couple things, right? So I want you to talk about your coaching program, right? What you've been teaching the last few weeks since the summit back in October, yeah. We're, five, we're about five weeks in now, right? Yep. Um, so, so talk about what you've taught the last five weeks and talk about that a little bit. And then I'll talk about what I taught. Yeah. Um, and uh, just so you know, you check the time. But um, yeah. here's what I'm thinking next week. I'm going to try and find three, four people to get on this with us next week. Yeah. And let's just... You know, it's the end of the year. We're coming, winding down at the end of the year. Let's get a couple of people. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. Um, maybe I'll, I'll call Danny this week, see if he wants to get on with us. And, yeah. um, you know, we'll find a couple other, uh, a couple other people to get on with us and we'll just have a conversation. So, okay. Uh, you mean next for, for this show next week, you mean, right? For this show next week. Yeah. For next Saturday. So if anybody's got any suggestions or want to be on with us, or they know somebody we should call, uh, you know, hit us up. Yeah. Hey, Carl, talk about what you've taught the last five weeks. Yeah, so so our program, um, you know, yours and my program, it's a it's a, a thirteen, you know, basically thirteen week or ninety days, which is a quarter. So I broke it up into my, my mindset training. I broke up into three three sections, right? The first section, which we're coming to an end, I was really building the foundation of the Think and Grow Rich principles, right? There's thirteen principles in that book that all come from the interviews that Napoleon Hill had a hundred years ago with the most powerful and successful women and men of the day, right? And so. That book is a compilation of all those conversations and those 13 principles. So we've been laying the foundation and the principles, all, you know, I, I memorize them because I've been, you know, it's desire. What do you really want, right? Your, your faith, like believing in something that you're, you haven't achieved yet, right? Auto suggestion, that's your self-talk. Like, what do you say to yourself? Then organized planning, your imagination, specialized knowledge. These are all the principles, the chapters of that book, right? Then it goes into the mastermind. It goes into the brain, how the brain works. It goes into how the subconscious mind works how um, we're stopped by fear, doubt, and confusion, and then also um, your energy, right? So I just named the, the chapters of the book. Those are the 13 principles um, that are in the book. And so what we've done in the last 30 days or so is we've laid the foundation for that. Now, the next 60 days, Mike, is going to be what's, what I call the 60-day Find Your Focus journal, right? And it's all around these people, these participants um, they want to build their multifamily business. So we're going to start journaling uh, on a daily basis. It takes about five minutes a day, but they're going to have a physical journal where we're going to go through their journaling and they're focusing on their multifamily. So that's basically the coaching program. You know, everything I do is the foundation of those 13 principles. And then the, the advanced part of it, the last 60 days, is they're going to actually journal so that at the end of that 60 days, combined with your coaching around multifamily, they're going to be that much closer to achieving their goal 
with regard to their multifamily business. So that's that's an overview of what we're doing. You know, what's really interesting, right, is they have all that. And now they're going to have they have all this multifamily stuff, too, that I teach. Right. Yeah. So uh, what a great program. I wish that when I was learning the business that I would have been able to get in a program similar to this. But you had to do either or back then. This is a yeah. combined program, right, that gives you both. So what I've been teaching in my first week, I taught about your why. Because really, I think that any business, whether you're in multifamily, whether you're in, you know, uh, technology, medical field, you have to understand your why. And it's not just, hey, I want to make some more money because, Carl, when you told me that, I gave you $10 and told you to go away, right? Right, you know? right. It's not, it, 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 your why is deeper than that. So, you know, I want more freedom. Well, what is more freedom? Uh really get you well it gives you the ability to make choices that you don't have otherwise right listen you pull to a stoplight you have a choice to go right or left you make the choice right so um that's what that's what your why does is it gives you that freedom so we talked about that week one then we talked about goal setting the next week so uh, you know i had them get a journal from the beginning because i wanted them to be able to be writing right? It's so critical. I am such an advocate about journaling that I, you, you're, listen, somebody said a long time ago, and I, I think it was Zig Ziglar, he said, uh, a life worth living is a life worth recording. So go back and read a journal or read some notes that you might have wrote 10, 15 years ago, see where you were at, you know, see if you're the same, see if you're different, right? So, um, I, we, I've got them journaling. So we set some goals, right? What do we want to accomplish? Boy, and I'm going to tell you what, that everybody really stood up. You know, I said, hey, I'll get me some goals. Get me your written goals by next week. And people got them to me. And it was interesting because then we scheduled the one-on-one -on -one call and I went back and that wasn't part of it, right? That was extra. So I went back and did these one-on-one -on -one calls with people. And we talked about those goals and we talked about what it was going to take to execute. So then we, we, talk, we talked about um, systems and strategies. So I talked last week about a buying system. What do you have in place to buy, right? So I had, I had 15 or 20 points that I used as a buying system. The style, the cap rate, the location, the class of property, the type of property. You know, just inside the multifamily space, Carl, you know this. There's a number of different types of property types. You got market rate rent, you have student housing, medical housing, you have affordable housing, you've got senior housing, you've got, you know, assisted living. So you pick a pick a spot because you can't do them all. And if you try to do them all, you know, I think you get, you know, you get shiny object syndrome, right? So all of a sudden you're going down a path and oops, what was that? And you go over there and grab something else. And I think that's the worst thing that we can do for ourselves. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about team building. Team building is so critically important. Listen, we are in the relationship business. If you can't build relationships with people and you can't have people in your corner, you know, uh, it, it doesn't serve you, nor do you serve anybody else. And, and I really have, I really believe that I have learned more and more that it's not about what you can do for me, but what I can do for you. And the more of what you can do for you, you know, hey, look at all the content we give away. Because we know that we're going to bless people and people are going to grow as a result of it. And if people grow, the world's going to grow. If we talk about kindness and love and peace, the world's going to grow in kindness and love and peace, right? Yeah, I, 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 Mike, I totally agree with you. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I talked too much. No, no, it's okay. No, and listen. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I know, I, you know, for anybody that is out there listening, I want you not only to hear what Michael's saying, I want you to really listen to what he's saying, right? Because he just gave you, if you just take what he just said, and you just follow the advice that he just gave you, I guarantee you, you are going to be far more successful than if you don't. I mean, one of the things you just said was pick your niche, right? Because in multi, listen, in commercial real estate, there's so many different niches. Then you get down to multifamily and you've got 10 niches, right? 
get really good at one of those. You know, I'll never forget there was a, a gentleman, his name was Ryan. He had a company that was called uh, Beds for Meds. And what he did is he would buy six and eight unit buildings around medical centers. And he would, he would break the rent up so that they rented, at, I think it was two week intervals or three week intervals. So it, in essence, he forced an extra month out of every year. So he got 13 months of rent in a 12 month calendar, right? And so that was innovative and he got really good at that. That's all that he did. And he, and he was really good at that and he was very successful. So, you know, that little piece of advice that you just gave, Mike, about zeroing in on what niche you want and then your 15 or however many checklists of the type of property, you know, location, age, size, all that stuff, that in and of itself will keep you focused and will keep you moving in a direction. And then when you get really good at that, you, you, you look back, you go, wow, I'm really good at this. I'm an expert at this particular thing. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not just I'm not just blowing uh, smoke up your skirt there, Mike. I'm, ser I'm dead serious. If you're listening to this, that little five minute, uh, you know, the thing that Mike just gave you is, is really, very really valuable because if you follow that advice, you're just, you're going to be more successful. Yeah. You know, and, and what do you always see? You know, success leaves clues. And I know you didn't <laughs> say that Mike to, to plug yourself or you didn't say that so that I would say this about what you just said. You said that because you, you honestly are, you know, you want to help people. You want people to succeed because yeah. the more people around you that succeed, the more successful you're going to be. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing that, that Zig used to say all the time, right? Is, you know, you help enough people get what they want, you ultimately get what you want. But you know what? Here's here's the deal, Carl. Listen, really from my heart of hearts, I've made millions of dollars a couple of times. I've lost millions of dollars a couple of times. You know what? It's not about that today. It's yeah. about the journey. I'm having a blast. You know, somebody said, uh, what do you like about your life right now? And I said, I like the life I have. I, I like everything about it, you know, and it's about, you know, it's about the journey today. So uh, listen, if I get up and uh, if I get up in the morning and I can make a choice, which I can, I can make a choice today. It, it's a big difference. Hey, listen, we're kind of winding down here, but um, I want I need to talk about Monday night. Monday night, we're playing cash flow. Oh, right, we're trying, right. We're trying to get, and we're playing virtually. If anybody, if you've ever played cash flow, it is a blast. So I can remember playing cash flow on a board game in a room with five or six guys. We'd be standing up, carrying on, having snacks, eating, playing the game, and we'd play for four or five hours, right? And we would actually have cash flow parties. So what we're doing is we're having, the game's gonna be professionally moderated by Michael Zhao, who does this all the time. If you ever wanna have a party and have people over and have Michael uh, virtually do this, it's a blast. So I wanna invite everybody who's out there to, um, uh, to come on Monday night, register, Call me, text me, uh, email me. I'll send you a link so you can get registered. But it's going to be fun. Take an hour Monday night, play cash flow with us, and see what you learn. You know what? It's about investing strategies. Hey, I'm I'm going to have my son come. He's 15 years old. Carl, you know, maybe ask your son to come. Yeah. I think so, there's uh, some so lessons uh, in it. How do you how do you get registered, Mike? Uh, uh, there's a there's a Zoom link that I'll send you or Carol will send you. So either send me a text or send Carol an email or you know uh, find you know Joel uh, and right. But what? So give the listeners your number or something. Give them yeah. something. Oh, that goes... I see what you're okay. Yeah, yeah Mike at mycoreintentions.com is my email or my cell phone is three two five four three six seven three five seven all right one more time one more time the phone number three two five four three six seven three five seven and just uh, uh send me a text i'll send you the link to register so you can be there monday night monday night seven o'clock and let me just talk about this for real quick so this is the end we just spent four weeks talking about goal setting on my meetup group 
So on Monday, I run two meetup groups, right? I run a multifamily mastermind one week. The next week, it's property management mastermind, and they alternate. And for the last, um, the last few weeks, we've talked about goal setting. We recapped 2020. I talked about a goal setting plan and strategy, business planning plan. And then we set goals. And now we talked about execution. And now we're going to finish it up with a, with a cash flow game because cash flow shows you how to execute and it teaches you strategies. You know, look at some of these guys that play chess. You know, I know a guy who played chess for hours and hours and hours. And when he was playing, you couldn't get his attention. Not a bowl of food, not anything. You couldn't get his attention, right? He was so focused on the game. You know why? Because the best chess players think out five to seven moves. The better chess players think out 12 to 15 moves. He was a really good chess player. <laughs> and um, he was out there eight or 10 moves, you, you know? And so there's a strategy about some of this stuff. So find your strategy, find your, uh, your place. So, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I, I will reach out to you to get that link. And cash flow for those of you that don't know, that was out of Robert Kiyosaki's uh, book, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, you know, and it talks about the four quadrants, right? Employee, you know, investor, business owner, right? And so, um, you know, it's a great, it is a great game. You know, it's kind of, it, you know, it's kind of like Monopoly on steroids. You know what I mean? It's, it really talks about strategy and, and, and how you do things. So I've played that before. Um, so yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make room on my calendar. And then the other thing I want to mention, Mike, is for those uh, listeners that are in our program next week, we're going to do our first deal day, right? After the show. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so for those of you that are in our 90 day execution program, uh, after the, the unplugged show next week, we'll roll right into a zoom call, uh, for our first deal day, the first of three deal days. So, um, that's going to be exciting too. Hey, I want to thank all the listeners this morning, uh, the people on Facebook, the people on Zoom. I'm glad you were here. Listen, like us, love us, tell people about us. You know, we're here every Saturday morning, 10 o'clock. A lot of rhetoric, a lot of unscripted, just, you know, hey, listen, this is where Carl and I get to be raw, real, right, Moose? <laughs> yep, yep. So. Yeah, and um, it's fun. Yeah, we have fun. So. Listen, we are interested in you guys and what you need, what you want, what you have to say. So text us, email us, tell us what you want to hear. Hey, if you have suggestions for next week, uh, my buddy Jack is out here right now. Jack, I'd love to have you on with us next Saturday morning just to talk about real estate. Uh, let me know if you're available and we will talk soon. So yeah, Mike, I just want to let everybody know if anybody wants that list of the 11 uh, leadership things, just email me at info at your focus guy.com. That's info at your focus guy.com. And just put leadership in the subject line and I'll send you the, the PDF on those leadership things. Okay. All right. Listen, have a great week, Mike. Uh, you know, looking forward to it. And yeah, let's talk. We'll talk offline. Yeah. Hey, listen, everybody. Thanks for being here this morning. Happy holidays. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Is it that was just last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. We didn't even say that. I don't. So uh, I'm a little behind. So and uh, <laughs> no, you mentioned it last week. Yeah. No, I know. I did. You, you did. <laughs> uh, hey, we uh, we love doing this. We love bringing this crazy stuff to you guys. And uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy your weekend. Uh, be kind to somebody today, love somebody in a way that uh, they deserve that might be a little difficult for you, but give back something that uh, might be a little bit better. Um, awesome. Talk to you later, Mike. Yeah, you bet, Carl.